We are in the process of working on empirical formulas and we're doing straightforward ones from percent composition and they're a little easier than the combustion problems that we're leading up to. Now when you do these you need to leave yourself quite a bit of room to work them. They do take a bit of space and I like to work mine from left to right. So I have these values 49.48% carbon, got hydrogen, nitrogen, and then it simply says, and the rest is oxygen. I mentioned that last video. You might not have picked it up right away, but that's not going to cause us too much problem. So we've got our carbon, and I, I label directly across like this, so I don't have to label every single step that I'm doing. I know I'm talking about hydrogen there. I know I'm talking about oxygen as I go across here. Now, and going percent to mass, we already discussed if we assume 100 grams is means just dropping the percent sign and adding a gram sign because 5.2 percent of 100 grams is 5.2 grams and 28.86 grams of nitrogen. Now, last time I pointed out that the sum of all of these, sum of all percents, and since we assume 100 grams, the sum of all that, the total, is the 100 grams that we assumed. So we can find the oxygen by subtracting. And if we did that, we'd find that oxygen was 16.46 grams. So let's go on to our next step. That was percent to mass. Now we want to do mass to moles. Mass to moles use molar mass, so one mole per 12.01. Hydrogen would be one mole, remember, not the diatomic mass, the atom of hydrogen because it's bonded. The same thing with nitrogen. Now I want to give you a forewarning at this place, especially some of you who really like to get into the process of rounding. When you're in a multiple choice question, rounding quickly and early on can save you a lot of time. In these problems, you can really be misled about whether you need to multiply to whole or not multiply by whole if you round too much. So don't round a lot at this point. I want you to take at least four significant figures as you go through this and you'll find that you won't run into some of the problems. We even had one on the AP discussion forum recently and it really was an issue of rounding a little bit too much. So it was also a hard question. but So we have 4.119 moles for the carbon, 5.1485, I just took 5.2 divided by 1.01, .01, and 2.05, I'm really carrying these out to make that point. Don't round, 1.02 Eight, eight moles of oxygen. So percent to mass, mass to moles. Now we need to divide by the smallest so that we'll get a ratio that is one to numbers bigger than one. And our smallest value here is 1.0288. So I'm going to multiply all of them by, or excuse me, divide each of them by 1.0288. If you do it to one, you must do the same thing to the others, or we've lost that appropriate proportionality that is necessary. If you do this, obviously we have the one here, and here we get 2.002, .002, which we can certainly round to two. That's well within that rounding range. This would be 5.004, again, rounds nicely to five. And then this one is 4.005, which we can round to four. So that gives us an empirical formula of C4H5N2O. I want you to notice that order. We've done a couple of these now. You notice that we put carbon, then hydrogen, then nitrogen, then oxygen. So it almost goes according to electronegativity, but not quite, because we typically put carbon before hydrogen. 
So that's our empirical formula. Now we have to get our molecular formula. So we've done one part of what the question asked us, and that's to determine the empirical formula. Now let's get the molecular formula. We were given this molar mass. Remember I said it first, we're going to give that molar mass. So we've got our number, let me change color so we can see this a little more clearly here. Our number of empirical formula units is the molar mass of our molecule on top divided by the molar mass of our empirical formula. And again, we do it like any other molar mass. 4 times 12.01, 5 times 1.01, 2 times 14.01, 1 times 16, and we would get 97.11. Now, within experimental error, this will be a whole number. And we get 2 in this case. And what that means is that we have 2 of these empirical formula units, two of the links in our chain. So what you're going to do with these, this number two, is you're going to multiply every subscript by that whole number that we get. And that will give us C8, H10, N4, O2 for our molecular formula for caffeine. Now, in the next problem, we're going to deal with combustion. It's a little tricky, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video at this point so we don't run out of time with the next one. So I'll see you when we do combustion.